What's up YouTube? This is Team Yugi Fails here with a video and today I'm going to be showing you uh, my personal favorite deck uh, probably ever created and that's Burning Abyss. Uh, this deck just keeps surviving every single ban list. It probably won't get hit on any ban list in the future. Um, well, in the near future anyways. It may be in the very, very distant future possibly, but currently it's it's very, very safe to pick this deck up and play. I always recommend people pick this deck up if you're a budget player, competitive player, whatever the case may be. It's a great deck to learn off of. It's a great deck to bring to tournaments and, uh, and just kind of stun your opponent with. Now, not only am I going to show you the main side and extra deck, um, afterwards I'm going to show you this full stack of cards um, that are different options that you can play in the deck. Uh, that's how versatile this deck is. There are plenty more that I just didn't like even look through uh, to put in here as possibilities, but there are plenty of other cards that you can toss in um, and, and utilize as... Uh, other cards that could either be a different engine for the deck that you like, uh, could be different stun cards that you want to play, or defense cards that you want to play. It's kind of up to you, but let's take a look at this deck. So, for the BAs, we're playing two Skarm, two Farfa. Those are the only ones that we play any multiples higher than one. Uh, one Barbar, -bar, one Seer, one Calcab, one Libic, one Alec, and one Graph. Um, this is fairly basic. We're just playing the 10 card BA lineup. This is what I personally like to do. Uh, I feel like 10 is a good number. Prior to this, I was playing a larger amount, but I changed the list up uh, for the better. Um, then we're technically playing three other BAs, which is Rhino Warrior. This is the only monster, um, for the most part, that we play um, more than two of. There's a couple that we do play more than two of, but we'll get to those and I'll explain why uh, we play more than two. Two, uh, two Danger Snake and two Danger Jackalope. So the Danger cards are really, really good. Um, they do get a little expensive, which is why I'm showing you guys those alternative cards afterwards too, not only for uh, your preference, but also in case you don't want to spend the uh, certain amounts of money that you would pay for the Danger cards. But those uh, are really, really good because if you open one of each, uh, basically you're going to make a Dante no matter what. Uh, Double Gallus. This card is super good, uh, especially for time. Um, if you go into game three and there's like a minute left on the clock, a minute and a half, you just activate this card. Um, and chances are, unless you mill a sec as light, uh, you should be, should be winning the game uh, because of that. So, really, really good card. Uh, one tour guide, best card, and also the worst card in the entire deck. Um, it does help you bait your opponent's ash out, but at the same time, if you need to use this and your opponent drops the ash, then it just sucks for you. Um, one Terra Top and one Taka Tomborg. These are pretty solid. Um, even if you draw this card, you can just banish your Sekka's Light to shuffle it back in um, and keep playing, basically. Then uh, we have the three Malicious and the one Sulkius. I go back and forth on whether or not I want to play this. Now this is one of the other cards that you play three of, and technically you only play one of it, because if you get one engrave, you just banish um, the the one engrave, and you just keep like link climbing with it, which is really good. Um, like the Sulkius with this can help you like make Beatrice if need be, but that's not uh, as common. Three Orbital Hydrolander. Play three of this card because it's your your big boss card. Um, card is absolutely nuts. Uh, and with the amount of banishing that you can do, you don't even have to worry about like struggling with that card because you should be able to resolve its effect and summon it every time. Uh, one Fairy Tail Snow. That's just what we play. Card helps you go through crazy Hydrolander plays, which can pick up games. Um, Hand traps. So I only play two Ash and two Droll. Basically, I'm trying to uh, stop the FTK if need be. It's you really don't need hand traps in this deck to be honest. Um, they're just an added bonus. Then I play three Kaiju's. Um, Kaiju's are just really good. You tribute whatever you need from your opponent, and then you just keep playing the game. Uh, it's fairly straightforward. Then spell cards, just the three seconds light. Um, that's all that we play there. Now let's move on to our extra deck. Uh, two Dante, um, really, really good card. One Break Sword. Um, this card is really good too. It helps you play through Goes and Match, uh, which is really important. Um, 
because basically you play two BAs, you overlay them into this, and then you can pop their goes in and keep playing Yu-Gi-Oh from there, um, which obviously is really, really good for you. Uh, one Beatrice, that should be fairly obvious. And then, of course, the one Dante Pilgrim to summon off of the Beatrice. Um, Pilgrim can be so versatile. Like, people don't, like, even realize how good this card is. Uh, and then you can, like, strip a card from their hand if they do end up getting over it. But it's really, really good. Uh, Link Monsters. One Underclock, one Cerberus, and one Phoenix. Those are the uh, Link 2s. Um, I've... I've toyed around and played two phoenix and no cerberus i feel like i want to play one of each in the current state of the meta um one unicorn uh these cards help you play through um rivalry as well um specifically unicorn and phoenix because your opponent will flip their rivalry on you um and when they do that they're like oh great now you can't make a dante which is fine because you just summon one of these and then you play through the rivalry and you keep going with your combos um one decode this card is just really really good um you can like if you open the fiendish rhino warrior combo uh which i'll show you um and like two bas then you can make this and beatrice instead of under clock beatrice uh which is even better uh one Shizbania. sorry i think i just knocked the camera there uh one Shizbania. um cards are really really good against sky striker altergeist that kind of stuff uh also really good in time just burning your opponent uh is always a good thing uh one boral sword this card just gives you games um like playing this card is super significant in, in most decks right now uh that aren't like you link decks uh one boral load um i feel like boral load is good I don't think it's the best card, but there are situations where you're going to want to make this, and it'll be really helpful. Uh, I actually play one Bomber Dragon. This card can be really good against a lot of decks. Uh, it can just blow a lot of decks out randomly, and people like don't even realize how good it is. Um, like You can summon a Fairy Tail Snow to one of its zones, and then blow up the main monster zone. And if you're playing against like Danger or FDK, and you can summon this and then do that, um, they're going to struggle. And then I play one Firewall as a Cherry's target, uh, which you'll obviously see in the side deck. Um, but those are the the extra deck monsters. Now let's move on to our side deck. Uh, as I said, the three Cherries for the Firewall. Um, there's not really any other card that you really need to hit. Um, if you play the Mirror, obviously you can side this in and hit their Dantes um, or Beatrice, whatever you feel like hitting. Um, but like it's another card against the FTK, which is really important to have. Um, Three Majesty's Fiend, uh, cards busted against just about every single deck in the format. Stops Altergeist, stops Thunder Dragons, uh, stops the FTK, um, all the good stuff. This card's really, really good. Uh, it's basically Inspector Border. Two of the Dino Wrestler, um, cards just really good against back row decks. And uh, I side this in against Thunder Dragons too, just to like bait out some of their banishing. Uh, and then I can play through uh, from there. Then I play three Twin Twister for the back rows, two Red Reboot for the back rows, and evenly match for the back rows in any kind of build a board kind of deck. Um, that's fairly fairly basic, um, but that is the the main cards that we're playing in my particular list. Um, the list works really really smoothly. I'm gonna show you the Rhino Warrior combo in case you don't know it. So let me just zoom out here. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and grab a Rhino Warrior and a, uh, a random BA. So let's grab Cal Cab. Um, so basically what you're going to do is you're going to normal summon the Rhino Warrior and then special summon the Cal Cab. This won't be destroyed because of Rhino Warrior's effect. Uh, then you're going to overlay these two and you will end up making a Dante. Uh, you would detach and you'd mill three, so we'll just mill, we'll just grab the top three cards, uh, which we know are the Skarms and the Farfas for me laying them out. Um, then Rhino Warrior's effect triggers, you're going to send, uh, let me just get to it here, the, oh, I'm sorry, no, not the, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, you're going to send the Graph from deck to grave. Graph's effect is going to activate and you're going to special summon uh, Seer from deck. Now, after you do that, you're going to link um the dante and the seer into your underclock taker now dante and seer will both trigger and you can target each other 
uh, th themselves. So like you're basically going to special summon this off the seer, and then you're going to add this off of the Dante. Then you can discard the seer to stack a Beatrice. Uh, on top of the Dante. So basically open up a BA and a Fiendish Rhino Warrior um, will get you into your Underclock Beatrice. You can do the same thing by opening just Tour Guide by itself. Uh, just Tour Guide by itself lets you special summon the Rhino Warrior and then you still get you still run through like the Seer play and everything and you get to add the Seer back off the Dante. Uh, so it does the same exact thing in the combo. Uh, you just have to play it out. Um, but that is the, the combo that you would normally do. Um, on your first turn for the most part that's like your your basic what you want to grab kind of thing um but i will obviously show you guys the um the spare cards that we're playing because i feel like that's really important i feel like people need to see like if their options uh to kind of say hey you know i don't know if i want to play this card or i don't know if i want to buy this card um because some people are playing on a budget i understand that you know uh, and some people just don't like certain cards in certain decks um or they like to play other cards instead. So let me go ahead and just start showing you guys um, some of the cards that I'm playing here that are, are other options that you can do, whether you're putting them in the main or side deck is kind of up to you, but I'm just gonna show some of them off. Um, so I'll start off with some hand traps. So Ghost Bells, Ghost Ogres, uh, DD Crows, Effect Veilers, uh, Artifact Lancias, Saravis, and then I count the Kaijus kind of as hand traps. Um, so these are like all the other kind of hand traps that you could probably play in this deck. Um, so a lot of these cards are good against different decks. It's going to be kind of dependent on what you feel like you're going to run into in uh, whatever tournament you're playing. Um, it, it will vary, obviously, per tournament. So like, for example, Ghost Bell could be good against um, maybe like Goki decks. It could be good against Thunder Dragons. Um, it could be good against Sky Striker as well because they're going to try and add um, one of their... their um, Spells back from grave to hand off of their Kagari. Uh, Ghost Ogre is good against multi roll. It's good against pendulums. Um, it, it's kind of good against a variety of decks, depending on what you're playing against. Uh, D Crow is really good against Sky Striker. It's good against the FTK because you can banish their Cannon Soldier. Uh, Effect Veiler is okay. Um, I don't know how I feel about Effect Veiler. Uh, seeing we can't play in permanence for the most part in this deck, um, Effect Veiler is, is pretty good. Um, Lancia is really good against Thunder Dragons. If you think you're going to play Infernal Aids, then sure, you can play Artifact Lancia. Um, it could be half decent against Light Sworn, too, because Light Sworn is going to be playing Fairy Tail Snow. Um, that's an option, obviously. Saravis is really good against Sky Striker um, because they're going to attempt to uh, use their, their Widow Anchor on one of your monsters, and you can discard the Saravis to negate it. Um, then the Kaijus, obviously, are good against things like Sky Striker, U Board decks. Um, just all that stuff. Uh, those are the, the hand traps that you can kind of substitute in. Uh, now we'll take a look at some of the other cards. Uh, I always tell people one of their options is to always play more BA cards. Um, you can always do that, it, especially if you're running on a budget. You don't have to play um, a lot of the stuff. You can play like different BAs and still kind of make up for space. Uh, that's always an option, and it's a really good option too because then it gives you other things in your grave for Hydrolander uh, to be summoned. I kind of count Crane Crane as another BA, um, but it is another card that you can play. It's not the best card, but it's it's, it's an option. It's kind of like another tour guide that can't be ashed, uh, but it can be belled. Uh, then other boss monsters. So Vanity's Fiend, if you want to play this instead of Majesties, you can. Um, or if you want to play this with Majesties and you don't want to play a different card that I was playing in the side deck, then by all means go for it. Um, BLS is an option. You obviously have to change the uh, the lineup in the main deck and probably play some some Veilers and some Ghost Ogres uh, to really get this card to work. Uh, Double Jinzo. Uh, well, I, I, I'm sorry. I should specify these aren't the the ratios that you have to be playing these cards at. It's just the cards that I pulled out when I found them. Um, Jinzo is an option that you can use as well if you feel like like Paleo is going to be relevant, Alter Geist is going to be relevant, um, and you want to play this card to kind of like play around it, then you could. Um, it's not the best card, but it's it's another option. Um, Cash Dragon Levenir, this card is okay. Um, seeing you play a lot of darks, you can basically hand strip uh, your opponent for one card, which is kind of nice. 
uh, Dark Arm Dragon. I actually was playing this in the last list that I used. Summoned it once, and uh, it was very subpar. Didn't do much for me at all. Not not a huge fan, but it's an option if you like Dark Arm Dragon and uh, you want to play it. And it, it can be really good. It, it can be. Um, but those are the extra boss monsters. Now onto one of the other engines that I used to play. Uh, the Rescue Cat engine into the Nat Beast. Um... So obviously you'd keep playing the Galluses, but you just add these cards in addition. Uh, if you feel like you're going to play like Pendulum, Sky Striker, that kind of stuff, then these cards are really good. Um, my only issue is that in the Sky Striker matchup, they like as good as this card is against Sky Striker. For whatever reason, every single Sky Striker player is always going to be able to Ghost Ogre this, um, and then you're just going to sit there and struggle because they Ghost Ogred here, Naturi Beast, or their main decking and permanences and. Uh, you went first, you made the Nat Beast, and then they impermanence this before they activate a spell. Um, but that's just some options that you can play. Um, then other extra deck monsters, Triple Burst Dragon, uh, King Darius, and uh, Levier the Sea Dragon. Um, I almost called it Chaos Dragon Levenir. Um, but the uh, premise behind some of these is that Triple Burst um, can play against Sky Striker because you attack like whatever extra deck card they have, whether it's Kagari, Shizuku, or Hayate. Uh, then basically you're not going to let them summon their Ray off of that card being destroyed, which is really good. Um, Darius is good against Borload. It's Darius just sucks. Like I, I don't like this card. Uh, it, like everyone's like oh it's so good against boar load i'm like yeah but you can also play hydrolander which doesn't target and you could pop boar load um like that's that's just so much better to do um than than play this card um but it's an option regardless and then uh levy of the sea dragon is uh a card that is really really good it's just that you don't need it as much um like if they called by the grave your seer you can make this and then bring back the seer then it'll be auto popped it'll go back to your grave and then you can summon the dante again and keep playing Yu-Gi-Oh uh, and looping your opponent that's an option you don't have to do it but that's just something that you can do um it's just kind of a nice spicy tech and like it helps you from from losing to not having a seer and grave um but other than that like the, there's not like anything super crazy that pops into my mind immediately that you could play um obviously like i said there are other cards that are options for sure but in my opinion those are some of the cards that uh, you can really consider out of everything to kind of decide whether you want to put them uh, into your burning abyss deck but i know this was a longer video but i really want to go in depth uh, and explain things because i feel like so many people try and build burning abyss and they do an absolutely terrible job um like they, they just throw these lists together and they say oh burning abyss is, is great it's this it's that which is true burning abyss is really good um but if you're playing a completely like terrible list you're just going to do terrible with it uh there's no question about that like it, it, if you sit there and you think that you know playing certain cards in this deck um that cause bricks is good then you're gonna have a problem you really don't want to be playing a lot of cards that are uh, outside of level three other than hand traps which obviously don't matter um and then cards like fairy tale snow and orbital hydrolander like you, you want to make the basic core of this deck centered around rank threes um and making dante or being able to just link summon uh, as much as possible it's fairly simple and straightforward people just don't understand it but if you enjoyed this video and you like the burning abyss deck obviously let me know and uh if you guys have any cool spicy texts that you guys play i'd love to hear what they are uh because i i love hearing cool stuff that people do with this deck all the time like i said it's my favorite deck i've been playing it since uh it first came out back in 2014, and I've been loving it ever since. But, like I said, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. And this is Team Yugi Fails, signing out.